Hi, today's video is all about how you can take some nice, really cool, epic B-roll footage for board games specifically. Now, the whole point of doing this B-roll for board games is to showcase the components. Hey, Tim. Hey, Kevin. B-roll also serves to give viewers a cinematic snippet of what the story is behind the game. And B-roll also serves to introduce the game prior to a tutorial, a review, or any kind of like gameplay footage. Today, we will be giving you three techniques to help you create your own cinematic sequence. And as an example, we'll be using Barbarians the Invasion. And then at the end, we'll show you a little snippet of what Kevin and I put together. Now, first off, it's important to understand what your game is about and of course, how to play it. Because when you understand this narrative, this can give you a whole outline for your video. Now for board games, it's actually pretty straightforward because not only are we given the story, but we're also given a how to play. So if you go in that order from like the setup to the gameplay itself, then it gives your B-roll more purpose. And it's also a little nod to those that have played the game and understand the progression as you're mimicking different actions as you would playing the game. For example, this game is about spreading out all over the map and conquering neighboring territories. So let's talk about three filming techniques that you can use for filming board games specifically. Now, unlike people who you can direct and show motion, board games don't have either of those things. So one way you can make your shots interesting is to introduce shot variety. Now it's tempting for board games because all the components are so small. So you are automatically inclined to do macro shots or very, very close up shots. So it's very tempting to stick to close up shots, but you have so many other options to choose from. You can do a wide angle of the box art. You can do a medium shot showing the entire board. And when you use close-up shots, there are ways you can introduce variety in that as well. So you can incorporate the textures of your table and your wall, and you can even add lights to your background to highlight the miniatures. The second technique we're going to be talking about today is the component drop. This one is definitely not for the faint of heart because if you're not willing to break a few pieces, then don't even bother. But if you've got the guts, then you can create some really cool shots. A component drop can be anything from one single component dropping onto a surface to dumping more than 1500 meeples onto the ground from 12 feet in the air. The success of your component drop depends on two things. The first is knowing how to properly shoot slow motion. The second is creativity. So let's talk about shooting proper slow motion. Slow motion is not something you do in the editing stage. You can't just take a clip you shot at normal speeds and slow it down. You'll end up with a choppy final result. Proper slow motion takes place in the camera, not on the computer. So first, you need to set your camera to the highest available frame rate. For most cameras, this will either be 60 or 120 frames per second. The higher the frame rate, the slower your footage will be. Now, make sure to implement the 180 degree shutter rule, making sure that your shutter speed is double your frame rate. This will give you natural looking motion and is an important thing to remember because it will help separate you from the amateurs. I don't have time to jump into all the details, but I recommend doing some research on the 180 degree shutter rule and sticking to it anytime you shoot video, especially slow motion. Let's talk about creativity. Sure, you can set up your tripod right next to a table, tilt the camera downward and just drop the stuff, but I know you're capable of much more. But allow me to give you a few ideas. One of my favorites is to get the camera set up directly over my surface, pointing straight down. Then grab a bunch of stuff in my hands, hold all of it directly in front of the lens so that the image is black, and then quickly pull my hands away, dropping the components straight down. Next, we'll set up our camera so it's right on top of our surface and we'll, just like before, just drop the components straight down. Another one that's cool from this angle is bouncing your components across your surface. So let's give that a try. This one definitely works well if you have someone to toss the components for you because that way you can follow them with the camera as they bounce along. If you want really precise movement, you can use a slider. You can also toss components 
towards the camera or away from the camera. A lot of slow motion shots can be achieved by yourself, but if there's any camera movement involved, it's going to be way easier if you have someone who can help. Another cool shot is to have someone else toss your components into the air above your surface and you follow the components with your camera as they rise and fall. Now thirdly, you can follow your movement as you are dealing out cards and also moving tokens around. So those are great options, but it resonates a lot more with your audience if you show your own movement too, because these are actions that they are actually taking throughout the game. Like for Barbarians, in the setup, you're layering all these plastic pieces to build up these different plastic molds for the volcano. I think it would be really cool to even film the different layers of the volcano as you are setting it up because it's such a unique component to the game. Now it also looks way more interesting to follow you as you are unfolding the board or moving different tokens around. Putting all of those together, you could end up with something like this. So that is it for our video today. We hope you enjoyed the final B-roll along with all the tips and hopefully you found all that helpful. Now make sure you check out Kevin's work, which I'll link right here. And also I will put it in the description box down below. He does some insane videography along with some amazing board game photography. And if you found all these tips helpful, please tag us across all of social media. We would love to see what you end up doing with all these techniques integrated into your own videos. And until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.